Why am I so lashed on to this four times the color remark in the Minecraft Live 2021 announcement trailer? It could just be a throwaway line, but I find it interesting that it's one of the statements in the trailer that doesn't get a small disclaimer at the bottom. What do I mean? First, there's a disclaimer under the segment about how quadromorphic endervision will dazzle and mesmerize you completely. There's a second disclaimer about Minecraft Live being four times more unpredictable. Finally, there's a third for the phrase block-breaking mob. As someone who has edited at least one video, I can say with 100% confidence that adding text to a video is more work than not adding text to a video, so there has to be a reason for these disclaimers. I also find it odd that in that second disclaimer about unpredictability, it does not also cover the statements about more color and more entertainment, even though they occurred just before the statement about unpredictability. If they went to the trouble of including the text to disclaim the statement about unpredictability, why wouldn't they include the statements about color and entertainment? The most logical answer is, because Minecraft will be getting more color and entertainment. And I'm not just pulling this idea out of the trailer. I have found evidence present in the current 1.17 version of Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Evidence that just as we currently have white, light gray, gray, and black dye, there will eventually be a pale, light, normal, and dark variant for every dye color in the game. Exhibit A, light blue dye. Similar to how we currently have light gray and gray dye, Minecraft also has light blue and blue dye. Why is it called light blue, making reference to the already existing blue dye? This could just be the case since light blue is the result of combining white and blue dye in the crafting table, just like combining white and gray dye yields light gray. Additionally, I tried to look up some other names for light blue, and it was hard to find something that was only one word like all of the other dye colors except for light gray dye. But what about periwinkle? That's one word that doesn't include blue in it, and it describes a very light shade of blue. This point by itself is rather weak since periwinkle isn't a word that most people frequently use. However, this isn't the only point of evidence I have. Exhibit B, Mixing Dyes and Cauldrons. It's audience participation time. One of these armor stands is decorated with light blue dyed leather, while the other was dyed by mixing the white and blue dyes in a cauldron. Which do you think is the one dyed with light blue? To help you, I've included item frames with the light blue dye for reference. Did you guess the one on the right? Because that's actually the blue and white dye. It also just so happens to look a lot more like Periwinkle than the current light blue dye. What I find perplexing about this is that blue and white are the dye colors used to craft light blue, but as you can see, light blue dyed leather looks very different from blue and white dyed leather. This can only mean that light blue dye isn't really light blue. So what's going on here? I spent close to an hour mixing dyes and cauldrons, sometimes comparing the results on armor stands. There are some rather strange things that happen when you mix certain dye colors. Like, mixing orange and lime actually does give you something very close to the color between them, yellow. While mixing yellow and green doesn't seem to give you something close enough to lime, even though lime is between yellow and green, just as yellow is between orange and lime. Granted, the crafting recipe for lime dye uses green and white and not green and yellow, but when I combined those colors to compare, green with white looked way less saturated than lime dye. Also, contrary to the crafting recipe, mixing white and black seemed to give light gray, while mixing light gray and black appeared to result in gray. It took me a while to figure out what this meant. To make things more straightforward for you, I'm going to pause talking about cauldrons for now and skip to Exhibit C, Color Codes. I didn't know about formatting or color codes until after I had experimented with the cauldrons and written a non-trivial portion of this script. Feel free to look up the wiki if you haven't heard of them either. The way I found out about them was a bit odd. I had seen multiple people refer to light blue dyed blocks as being aqua. This caught my attention because... One, I didn't remember that color name being ascribed to items which were dyed light blue in Minecraft. Two, it seemed a much more apt color description of the blocks produced with so-called light blue dye. And three, it was one word, so it would, at least in theory, generally fit in with Minecraft's color naming scheme. So I typed Minecraft Aqua Dye into a search engine. That led me to the wiki's page about dye colors. At the bottom, there was a link to the page about formatting colors, where I saw the colors aqua and dark aqua. While the hexadecimal values listed under color codes weren't an exact match to any of the values listed under the color values section of the dye wiki page, 
It did seem like light blue dye matched with aqua and cyan dye matched with dark aqua. It also looked like lime dye matched with green while green dye matched with dark green. Back to the cauldrons, when I combined lime dye with black, it looked a lot like green dye. Was green dye just a darker shade of lime? I did try mixing light blue dye with black to get cyan, but I'm not sure if the result was close enough. Additionally, just as I had combined orange and lime to get yellow, I tried combining light blue with purple to get blue. I did get a shade of blue, but it seemed to be lighter than normal blue dye. It was also darker than blue and white dye mixed together. I then tried mixing cyan and purple together, since after all, there's the possibility that cyan and light blue are just two shades of the same color. The result seemed very similar to purple and light blue. Does this mean that the current blue dye is actually dark blue? I then tried mixing purple with green and lime, and those results made no sense to me at all. However, we still have one final piece of evidence to consider. Exhibit D, wood plank colors. If you've watched my previous video about dye colors, you'll remember my theory that Mojang will make wood types to correspond to all of the dye colors. In that video, I claim that warped planks are meant to represent cyan, and crimson planks are meant to represent red. When I compared warped planks to a cauldron full of cyan dye, they seemed to match quite well, so no surprises there. In fact, that's one more point of evidence in favor of warped planks being the substitute for cyan-dyed wood. Naturally, things were more difficult with the crimson planks. I tried red, purple, and magenta. I even tried red mixed with black, since I was theorizing that cyan was light blue dye mixed with black anyway. The result seemed like a closer match than the prior three, but it still wasn't quite right. I then mixed red and purple, and I think this is actually a surprisingly good match. I did say in my previous video that crimson planks could just be an instance like cyan terracotta where things are colored differently than we might expect. But given how well this mixture matches, and the fact that the Minecraft Live trailer claimed there would be more color, I wonder if Mojang would consider adding another dye color between red and purple. What would they call this? Well, in case you weren't aware, the adjective amaranthin can be used to describe something which is a reddish purple. So calling this color amaranth is an option. Just saying. Another relatively obvious dye to wood connection is when we compare orange with acacia. I always knew acacia was orange, but I didn't expect them to match quite this well. So I started thinking about the remaining five plank types. Jungle wood is a bit strange. It's not quite brown, so I figured I'd start there. I tried comparing it with orange mixed with white and orange mixed with light gray. I think they both work, but I'm leaning more towards the orange with white. Oddly enough, when you mix orange with black, you get something that looks very similar to brown. Not sure if that's significant. Regardless, I was left with four planks. Birch, oak, spruce, and dark oak. I initially thought they corresponded to brown with white, brown with light gray, normal brown dye, and brown mixed with black, respectively. However, birch and oak didn't seem to fit that well. I previously said that birch looked a little too yellow to be considered the same as white dyed wood, so I tried mixing yellow and white. I was again surprised by how well it matched. I'm still not sure about oak, but I think yellow mixed with light gray might be a better match than brown with light gray. Things were especially tricky when I then examined spruce and dark oak. For dark oak, I was stuck between brown and brown with black, though I am leaning a little more towards the latter option. For spruce, both regular brown and brown with light gray looked decent, but again, I'm leaning towards the latter, which, incidentally, might mean that we're still missing a brown dyed wood equivalent. Naturally, this raises at least two questions. One, how will we be able to get new dyes? And two, how will we get their respective wood colors? Incidentally, I think both of those questions have the same answer, new biomes. Sure, some of the new dyes might be available through crafting, but I wouldn't be surprised if they decide to make some dye colors dependent on finding a specific plant. Incidentally, the proposed updates for the savanna, desert, swamp, and badlands biomes presented in the previous biome votes would all add new plants or trees which could be a source of new dyes or of new wood colors. There's also the possibility of more plants and trees being added to the nether, and or another currently unreleased dimension. I've already discussed why I suspect an end update could be coming in the near future, and I plan to discuss in a future video why I think Mojang might not be quite done with the nether just yet.
I've seen others point out that there could be another dimension added to the game, but that may not happen until the end dimension and the remaining overworld biomes have been updated. So with all of those points combined, I'm expecting Mojang to announce changes to the die colors at Minecraft Live this year. Of course, there are some limitations to my explanation for why I think we will get more die colors, which I am obliged to admit. For starters, there's the issue I had with trying to recreate cyan dye by combining light blue with black. I had similar issues with replicating blue dye by mixing purple with light blue, cyan, green, or lime. There's also the fact that this would add a significant amount of complexity to all of the dyed blocks like wool, concrete, terracotta, and beds. And if they will be adding wood types to correspond to the dye colors, they'd have to figure out how to add all of those to the game as well. There may be some other issues with my theory, but I'm running out of time for making this video. So let's briefly consider the claim that there will be four times the entertainment. Unfortunately, I have less evidence for this point than I did for the die colors. However, I find it interesting that when the phrase four times the entertainment is said, we see four parrots dancing on top of jukeboxes. True, we don't see the tops of the blocks, so we can't be sure they aren't no blocks. But since parrots only dance in response to jukeboxes playing music discs and not note blocks, I think that's a fairly safe assumption to make. Does this indicate that Minecraft could be getting more music discs? The video from Minecraft Live 2020, which showed the new deep dark biome, did show a double chest and barrels in what appeared to be a generated structure. So perhaps a new music disc could be found in that biome. After all, the skulk sensors do respond to sound. And then there are those sections of the trailer about pillager radio sound and the broadcast system beacon, which don't get disclaimers. It would be nice if there were a way to extend the range at which you can hear a jukebox through some kind of broadcast system, though there may be some limitations with that since you can only have so many chunks loaded. One alternative I can see is if the player were able to obtain a portable jukebox which could be kept in the inventory to listen to music discs. Also, speaking of pillagers, there are chests and pillager towers, so that could be a location for a new music disc as well. Of course, all of this talk about broadcasting could just be due to the fact that Minecraft Live will be held online, but people have been asking for more music discs for a while. I've also seen people point out that since the announcement was themed like it was old or retro, that could indicate that archaeology will be here soon. That would be great if it is. I also think it's worth noting that a lot of that trailer featured the neutral mob found in the end, so that could point to 1.19 indeed being an end update. Regardless, I'm excited. I just hope I'm actually able to watch it live unlike last year. Until next time, take care.